Archaeologists have uncovered the remains of a 1,500-year-old Byzantine church near the Sea of Galilee, possibly built over the hometown of the Apostles Peter, Andrew, and Philip. The church, about one and a half dunams in size, includes a nearly perfect mosaic with an ancient Greek inscription. The message calls Peter not just an apostle, but the chief apostle and keeper of the keys to heaven. This discovery could deeply impact Christian beliefs. The church was found in Galilee, not Rome, right where Christianity began. Experts are calling it one of the most important biblical finds in recent history. For years, scholars have searched for the lost town of Bethsaida, mentioned in the Bible as the home of Peter, Andrew, and Philip, John 1 verse 44. Now, this discovery may finally reveal its location. Hidden for over 1,400 years under mud and silence, this church might change everything we thought we knew. So why isn't everyone talking about it? Stay tuned, this find is more than history. It's a theological game-changer. Inside this ancient church, researchers didn't just find history, they found something deeply spiritual. At the center of the old mosaic floor, they discovered a Greek inscription referring to Peter, not just as a follower of Jesus, but as the leader of the apostles and the one given the keys to the kingdom of heaven, just like in Matthew 16 verse 19. The mosaic is in amazing condition, looking almost brand new even though it's over 1,400 years old. Experts like Dr. Craig Evans say this could be the strongest archaeological evidence of Peter's home ever found. Dr. Notley, who helps lead the excavation, said the mosaic confirms everything about the church, the town, and its people. This discovery brings attention back to Bethsaida, a once busy fishing village known as the House of the Fishermen. It's where Jesus performed miracles like healing the blind and feeding thousands. But Jesus also cursed the town for its unbelief, and soon after, it vanished from history. Over the centuries, people searched for Bethsaida, but its true location stayed hidden. In the 1800s, some thought it was at a place called E.T. Tell, but it was too far from the Sea of Galilee and lacked Roman-era remains. Things changed after the 1967 Six-Day War. Archaeologists began to explore a site called El Erige, much closer to the water. They found pottery, glass, and mosaics showing the area had been lived in for centuries. In the 2000s, after Pope John Paul II was flown over the site and given a replica of a key found there, interest grew. By 2016, full digs revealed the ruins of a Byzantine church buried for over 1,400 years, possibly the real Bethsaida. In their first digging season, archaeologists found Roman-era coins and tools from the 1st century CE. By 2018, they had uncovered the remains of a Byzantine church, bathhouse, guest rooms, and a public area. Then, they discovered ancient Greek inscriptions. One mosaic had a prayer for a man named Constantine, not the emperor, but likely a local supporter. It mentioned Peter clearly as the chief apostle and holder of heaven's keys. This matches the 8th century writings of Bishop Willibald, who said he stayed at a church in Bethsaida dedicated to Peter and Andrew. For years, experts thought Willibald's story was just a legend. But the discovery of this church now supports his account. The building was buried under layers of soil for centuries, surviving floods, wars, and time. In 2016, digging began at El Erige. Within weeks, they found the base of a Byzantine church built over older Roman remains, a timeline of worship layered in stone. This wasn't just a church. It was a full complex with a bathhouse and guest rooms, just the kind of place early Christian pilgrims would visit. In the mosaic floor, three Greek inscriptions were found. One was nearly perfect. It read, This mosaic was made by the efforts of Constantine, servant of Christ, for the chief of the apostles and holder of the heavenly keys. Saint Peter, pray for him and his children. This text clearly gives Peter authority, echoing Jesus' words in Matthew 16 verse 19 and Isaiah 22 verse 22. Even more amazing, Everything matches Willibald's 725 A.D. account, a church by the water, guest areas, and a holy atmosphere. What was once seen as legend is now backed by evidence. 
The site doesn't just tell us where something happened, it shows what early Christians believed. It connects scripture, history, and faith in one powerful find. This village might be the actual hometown of Peter, Andrew, and Philip. That's not just a story, it's backed by real history. From under the ground, remains of an early church show a deep connection to the Bible, not just in words but in stone and tradition. The church at El Arage was likely built in the 5th or 6th century. Early Christians didn't build churches randomly, they built on places they believed were holy, where important events happened. We see this in many places, like Bethlehem, Christ's birth, Jerusalem, his death and resurrection, and Nazareth, where the angel spoke to Mary. Now El Arage, possibly the real Bethsaida, is showing similar signs. The people who built the church didn't have modern tools, just memory and tradition. But their closeness in time helped them remember where to build. Archaeological finds like coins and tools show that it was once a busy fishing village, with real people, real stories, maybe even real apostles. Above this village, they built a church, not just for anyone, but for Peter, the one Jesus gave the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Inside the church, an inscription doesn't just call Peter a saint. It calls him chief of the apostles, a clear sign of leadership, not just respect. And it was written in Greek, not Latin, long before the church split between East and West. That means Peter's special role wasn't just a Roman idea, it was part of early Christian belief everywhere. The inscription even calls him holder of the keys to the heavenly kingdom, directly linking to Matthew 16 verse 19, a verse central to Catholic teaching. Now with a full dig happening at El Arage, ruins of this Byzantine church, buried for over 1,400 years, are coming to light, and they match the gospel story in both place and history. A recent discovery in Peter's hometown has revealed an ancient stone inscription, proving something important. Peter's special role was recognized by early Christians long before church divisions and debates began. This shows that in the land where Peter lived and followed Jesus, the early church didn't see him as just another apostle. They saw him as the leader, the one with the keys, the authority, and the mission. For nearly 2,000 years, Peter's role has been at the center of Christian identity and division. Critics often point to verses like Matthew 18 verse 18 to argue that all apostles had equal authority. While that's true in part, only Peter was given the keys, a powerful ancient symbol of royal authority and stewardship, as seen in Isaiah 22 verse 22. Keys meant the power to act on the king's behalf. This symbolism appears clearly in Matthew 16, and now, an archaeological find in El Arage backs it up. The early church, including the Byzantine church, believed in Peter's unique authority long before the rise of the Pope or the East-West split. This belief was not just Roman Catholic, it was widespread. The inscription doesn't prove the modern papacy, but it roots the Catholic view deeply in early history. It shows that Peter's leadership wasn't just made up later, it was known and honored even where he lived. For non-Catholics, this isn't an attack on belief, but it is an invitation to think. Can a belief this old and widespread really be ignored? Or does it point to something deeper about leadership and unity in the church? What started as a routine dig has become a powerful moment where faith, history, and scripture meet. The mosaic found at El Arage isn't just a piece of history, it's a message. It confirms how strongly the early Christians saw Peter's role, and how that memory has lasted through the ages. In a time when tradition is often questioned, this ancient message still speaks, quietly but powerfully. One reader said, It's the most important thing I've read since the moon landing. Because in that moment, history didn't just speak, it revealed. Now the question is no longer if it happened, but what we do with this truth.